But in the Arabic press, he doesn't. He says he doesn't believe in an interfaith dialogue. Now, if he really believed in interfaith dialogue. I invited him. I'm doing a big event at CPAC. I invited him, I invited Daisy, I invited Sharif Agamal for a little interfaith dialogue. Yeah? I mean, he, he's not coming because the deck is not stacked. So I got on television a lot, and a lot of people learned a lot of things. I knew the door was closing. As soon as the door was open, I knew the clock was ticking. And when that bell went off, and it was a bell, it's like, you know, you get into a fight. You know, ding, 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 okay. You gotta, gotta get in your points. You know it, it's not gonna be a level playing field, meaning they're gonna have four people against you. And uh, the um, jihadists never send the same person to debate me twice. They know my game, but I could never watch the games of my enemy. I debated Palestinian hip hoppers. I debated Muslim Brotherhood. I debated CARE. I debated ACLU. I, they just kept throwing them up at me. Now, there's no opposition to the mosque. Now, Time Magazine has nominated Imam Raouf for Man of the Year. The slumlord, okay, who got $2 million from the city of New Jersey, who was sued by the city, whose building went into receivership. You with me? He's applying, he and Sharif Agamal are applying for 5.5 million taxpayer dollars, seed money for that mosque. And where's it coming from? The 9-11 fund. Now this is, excuse me, but this is real chutzpah. Because they keep telling everybody it's not ground zero. It's around the corner. It's around the corner, it's not ground zero. First of all, just so that you know, it is ground zero. That building was destroyed in the attacks. That building is ground zero. So you see, when it's convenient, it's not ground zero. And when it's convenient, it is ground zero. So we're gonna fight, we're gonna protest, and we will, this is a long war. This is gonna be a long march uh, to this mosque. I mean, look, it is America. They're gonna build it. But they're gonna build it with such a fight. And it's funny, because someone uh, called me, a reporter called me last night. They said, you know, they said that the, uh, the imam says that they turned the public relations corner now, and the people are with it. I said, the people are with it. I said, the only public relations corner that they turn is that the media turned off the opposition. That's all they've done. America is no, no, no happier with this. And I think that this law in Oklahoma, which the judge struck down, because the judge saw it in purely religious terms, when in fact the people passed that law for political and supremacist terms, in those terms, not in religious terms. We have no problem with Islam, yeah? really. And this is what you must tell people because they'll call you an Islamophobe. I don't care if you worship a stone, just don't stone me with it. The problem with Islam is that it's a complete system. It's a complete system. It's political, it's legal, it's social. We must fight my organization that I uh, uh, co-founded with Spencer. We fight for the separation of mosque and state. That's it. I don't want to discuss religion. I'm not interested in it, seriously. But this freedom of speech, once free men lose freedom of speech, they can, uh, they can only resort to violence. And this is what, this is what worries me. Uh, normally you'd say, well, we have the First Amendment, we have no problems. But if you have a president who is a transnationalist, if you have a president who's abandoning American sovereignty to international law, and he, first time in American history, co-sponsored, a resolution at the UN to restrict free speech, not to defame Islam, then you have a problem. I mean, he, he uh, um, appointed Harold Coe, who is the legal advisor at the State Department, an avowed transnationalist, internationalist, Sonia Sotomayor, an internationalist, Elena Kagan, an inter internationalist. Things are happening. Things are happening, we are at war, and you must do your part. You have to wake up every morning, and you throw your legs over the bed, and you say, what am I going to do today to save the republic? You have to do one thing. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's if you forward an article. I don't care if you have a conversation with someone at the bakery. I don't care if they put their hand in front of your face like they do to me. I don't care. You have to do something. This is why this particular uh, event, and events of this kind, must be attended. Coalitions must be formed. I'm thrilled that the Coptic Christians are becoming more active because our coalition are the, the victims. 
the victims the Hindus, Sikhs, uh, the Jews, the, the God, they, they don't even know that they're victims. Um, the, but you see, I won't spend time on, on, on let's say, the liberal uh, Jews because their, you know, religion is their, is their uh, politics. They're married to their, to their, they worship the church of human secularism. It's a waste of time. Forget it. I'm telling you, we have to build coalitions together. We are the media. We are our own media. The media is the enemy. The Department of Justice is the enemy. They drop the case against the coal, but they're prosecuting to where the niqab and, 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 and you know, and, or, and, and you see, you know, they're, they're suing Disney. Now look, Disney has a dress code since 1957. You want to wear, you know, you want to wear the niqab? Don't work at Disney. You know, it's not about that. It's about opposing Islam, the masking of the workplace. When you're suing, you're suing. The union is suing to impose uh, prayer times on union contracts in Greeley and Grand Marshall. And now, the Department of Justice is suing, I think it's J.B. Swift. It's, it's a meat packer, I may be wrong on who it is. Now they're suing on behalf of imposing prayer times. A woman is fired from Rising Star Industries in Florida because she was eating a bacon lettuce and tomato sandwich in the company cafeteria. The cashiers at Walmart, the cashiers at Target, they won't handle meat, that's not her own. This is all ways of imposing Islam on the secular marketplace. There's prayer spaces now in public schools in New Jersey. Well, a little boy wants to pray, and so, you know, let's give him a little, let's give him a group. It all sounds innocent. It all sounds innocent. And if Christians or Jews or were trying to make, were demand, making these demands, I would be just as fierce in my opposition. But they're not. And I'm telling you, on college campuses, you ask Robert what it's like for Robert to speak on a college campus. You know, we went to speak at Temple. You know, there they are outside. Hey, 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 not in our state. I mean, they got pies thrown at them. There's an academic jihad. They're rewriting the textbooks. Look at your children's textbooks. I guarantee you there's a chapter in there on Islam. I guarantee you. It doesn't belong there. You've got to get involved. You've got to go to your school boards. You have to. You have to fight for this country. You have to. You will not like what comes after America. That's it. <laughs>